So, Jalen, when we broke, we were talking about Malcolm Jenkins and um, his impact on you as it relates to the politics and what we need. Um, let, let's get back to that for a minute. So uh, we kind of cut you off mid-thought mm. as we went to break. Mm. Um, so I'm going to toss it back to you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can even go back to saying um, I have a brother back at home. You know what I mean? I uh, made a mistake when he was younger. Um, he's 28 now. You know what I mean? And, and it's and – it's, he made a mistake when he was 18. Um, went to jail, got out of jail. Um, like I said, now he has a, a asterisk by his name with with every background check that he's had. You know what I mean? And he's been a clean cut guy from this point point out. But it's it's still hard for for him to get a job. And I mean, just me. Um, of course, I have to do a couple more, a little more research on it. But I feel like when 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 a person does make a mistake or they get in trouble, and I mean, if if you, you do the crime, you do the time. That's that's fair game. You know what I mean? But I feel like once you do that um, and you get out, you should have an opportunity to be able to, to to live a better life. You know what I mean? I think that's one of the, that's one of the hardest things to do right now. You know what I mean? You have you have people who can't. And like I said, they always end up reverting back to the, the same old things because that's the only way that they know how they can get a little change in their pocket. You know, it's folks like you, um, Michael Rubin, um, Meek Mill, um, uh, Malcolm Jenkins, um, our former governor of New Jersey, Governor McGreevy, um, who run, uh, uh, runs the New Jersey Reentry Corporation, yeah. which helps people leave um, prison, reassimilate into the community, um, that brings awareness to that. Uh, the New Jersey legislators have um, taken action, and I know a lot of other states are starting to follow in suit. And what they're trying to do is uh, make it to where you can't ask about people's criminal history on job applications. And there will be certain exceptions for high security clearance. Of but outside of that, what do you think can be done um, to help that individual who's transitioning from incarceration to um, a job where they can feed their family? Um, and this is me just talking. Um, Absolutely. Set up a program. You know what I mean? Um, and and I'm saying outside of uh, a probation period or anything like that, set up a program to to with these companies. Maybe these companies can set up a program to where people can come in and they may have a criminal background, but they can show you a six month, eight month, twelve month period to where they can get this job done and and they can get it done the way that you want want them to get it done. You know what I mean? I think that's the biggest thing. Um, you you get you do a background check and you have these all these marks that okay we can't hire this type of person can't hire this type of person can't hire this type of person well set this program up and and let this person show you that that they made a mistake and that's not them and that they're here to work and that they're here to provide for their family and once the program is finished um now you can hire them we've seen that, we've seen that happen a lot here so my law firm where we're broadcasting from today um we've seen clients that have come in that have made a mistake we've represented them and what I think a lot of the general public doesn't realize is the victims in cases are often the family members. So you have somebody, and, and I, I think that you experienced this in your family, who made a mistake, did time, but while they're doing time, they have children, they have a yep. wife, they have a brother, they have a husband, they have a mother, a father, a cousin, and sister, whatever it is. And those folks are left with additional responsibilities. And we're... A lot of people don't um, appreciate the impact of a job. Mm. There's something to be said for the self-esteem you have when you hold a job rather than going back and turning to the streets. Yeah. So what you're talking about, I know that the building trades are huge in, in giving people opportunities. Um, and, and a lot of my friends who are in the building trades have come out and created opportunities for folks, for men and women who have gotten, uh, you know, had contact with the criminal justice system, but afterwards they need a place to turn. And more often than not, the recidivism rate is a lot lower when people do get those opportunities. So I'm, I'm right there with you. I yep. think it's an important piece. Yep. So Jalen for president, right? So you're the president, right? right? I mean, everybody else is throwing their hat in the ring. Why right. shouldn't it be the green, the green goblin? Might as well. All right. <laughs> so three things you want to accomplish. 
Three things I want to accomplish. I would say better housing for Section A, for sure. Uh, growing up, had a lot of Section A housing. Um, not saying I stayed in it, but seen a lot of Section A housing, um, and it's and it's bad. You know what I mean? Um, it, that's where a lot of your crime is done, being done. You know what I mean? That's where you get uh, the the population, the the crime rate is is that's probably where it's the highest, for sure. I think I think better better housing and better situation for for people with Section A for sure. Um, second thing, I would probably uh, it w- it would be um, setting up that program for sure. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, t- to where these these people who are getting out of jail, um, they they can get in a position to where they can provide for their families for sure for sure. Um, then also, um, I seen something on Twitter before talking about. Um, um, like one 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 flight or jet or something like that uh, could pay for it. You know, half half the kids in in America um, f- for college or something something crazy like that. Um, I would I would try to make for sure kids with a high enough GPA. You know what I mean? Um, uh, be able to at least you know get their first year or two in college for free. You know what I mean? I think um, we we would say we want these kids to to be successful in life and. And I mean, I was a student athlete, you know what I mean. So I really didn't have to worry about college funds, and my mom didn't have to worry about things like that. But I had a lot of friends in high school um, who wanted to go to college, who went to college for maybe half a semester um, or, or a whole year, but they couldn't go back their second year or the third year because um, the funds were too high. You know what I mean? And, and you're talking about that, um, we're setting up people to fail because now you're getting out of you're getting out of college. You know, without that, without that paperwork, you can't get a real job. You can't make real money. Um, and a lot of my friends in high school had kids. You know what I mean? Maybe two or three kids, and now they have to do, they have regular jobs, and they can't provide for them. And then now we're going back and forth to where we're saying they're now they're in the criminal system. Now we talk about educational costs. Yeah. You know, what folks don't realize is those same people who went to college for a year or two years, they have educational debt that they can't get rid of and they can't get a good job. Yep. I mean, it's a, it's a downward spiral. hundred percent. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a generic question. You've probably heard this every day of your professional career. Okay. What's Jalen Mills look like post NFL? Post NFL? Post NFL. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I do want to coach for sure. Um, I don't. I don't know if I want to. If it would be college or it would be high school. Um, but it's just something about me that um, my mentor um, before before I got serious in football, he kind of took me under his wing. You know what I mean? Showed me the ropes of you know how to how to be uh, not only an athlete but a student athlete. You know what I mean? Also how to be how to be a man. You know what I mean? So I think. Um, and, and with him, I, I evolved into the person that I am now. Um, so I think me being a coach and, and, and giving back to kids and, and, and teaching kids fundamentals on different things, teaching young men, you know, how to be men, you know what I mean? Single, single parent home, grow up with my mother, really didn't know how to be a man, you know what I mean? So just I think that, that involvement, I think I, I would be um, really good at that. Do we miss anything about who Jalen Mills is? Is there anything that you want to add? Uh, no. Um, uh, besides on the field, uh, I mean, just love and caring guy. You know, off the field. I mean, I love my family. Um, I mean, I love people. You know what I mean? For sure. I I, I like to give back. Um, for sure. Whether it's giving somebody a hug. You know what I mean? Whether it's you know wh- whatever it may be. Um, that's that's me for sure. So I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you. This was our first podcast. Yeah. It was an awesome way to kick it off. Keep up the great work on and off the field. You know I'm a huge fan. 